It was an undercover unit of shadowy practices born out of protests against the Vietnam War. While left-wing protesters of the 60s and 70s were marching through London, how could they know that a new police operation, the Special Demonstration Squad, or SDS, was marching alongside them, spying on activists like Tarek Ali? How are we going to unite? To fight racism. Here's one of the several left-wing organizations infiltrated by covert officers from this new squad in the Met's special branch. One an inquiry today said should have been shut down and whose tactics were unjustified. Tactics like stealing the identities of dead children. Frank's brother Michael fell off a fishing trawler in 1968. He'd just turned 18. The police and rescue services searched for a couple of days, but nothing was um, found. So um, we never really got the chance to have closure, you know, when we lost Michael. His body was never found, but his name was used to spy on people, a fact his family only discovered in 2018. The undercover police officer that used Michael's ID, he himself was married, but he had an affair with a, a woman that he was spying on. He also got, got himself arrested at a demonstration under Michael's name as well. This chap gave Michael a criminal record and had an extramarital affair under his name. In a way, it's sullied all our memories of Michael because when we think back the short time that we had with him, now we can't think of those memories now without thinking of this undercover police officer. It's like he stood there looking over Michael's shoulder, you know, and it's uh, really distressing. This is a unit that operated until 2008, although today's report, which focuses on its first 14 years, says it should have been disbanded in its infancy, that its ends couldn't conceivably justify its means. The vast majority of organisations that were infiltrated posed no threat to the state, and yet officers spent years making friends and allies with activists, entering their homes under false identities and gleaning information about them, some of which is still kept on police registers. It even identifies six officers who entered sexual relationships with activists while undercover. Covert officers would go on to have sex, marriages and even children with activists over decades. The inquiry's chair, Sir John Mitting, said he'd wait until the end of the inquiry in 2026 to address the impact of sexual relationships across all undercover policing. I was involved in all kinds of environmental protest groups. Lisa, not her real name, was unknowingly in a relationship with an undercover police officer for six years from 2004. He was an integral part of these groups. It, he, was, he was an integral part of my life. He was part of core organising crews. At no point did we suspect that he was a police officer. I'll never get those years back, the years that I spent with him and the years that I've been fighting for justice. Lisa will have to wait another three years for answers. There's still so much secrecy surrounding what happened to us and why. It's a really gruelling and difficult journey. I still haven't seen my full file and it's time that they just released the files. Reacting to the first part of Sir John's report today, the Met issued an apology. Some of the things that went on back then, those sexual relations and the use of deceased ident children's identities has caused untold pain and suffering to those people affected and their families, which we are very sorry for. If you do not disperse you, I will arrest. Sir John said the majority of the SDS's officers performed their duties conscientiously in the belief they were acting in the public interest. And yet, he added, had the public known about its activities, it would have been brought to a rapid end. Amelia Jen there, well, the left-wing campaigner and author Tarek Ali, who you saw in that report, joins me now. Mr Ali, some of the devastating stories of the impact of, of the activities of this squad we heard just now. You were spied on by at least 14 undercover police officers over several decades. What do you make of the verdict of this report today? Well, I wasn't expecting anything else. Uh, I'm quite pleased that uh, the judge in charge of the inquiry, Justice Mitting, has said that there was no cause to keep this inquiry, uh, keep the surveillance going after October 1968. Now, he says that now, but at the time, both political parties, Conservative and Labour, sitting on Home Affairs Committees, 
in the House of Commons saw no reason to ask any questions uh, from senior policemen about these people, what they had been up to and what was going on. I mean, let me just tell you one short story. I was going for a jog on Hampstead Heath in the 90s and someone stopped me. So I panicked a bit and he said, I have to tell you something. My wife was working at GCHQ in Cheltenham and her job was to monitor your phones and listen to your conversations. And after listening, when you was breaking up with your partner, listening to your daughter crying every night and you reading her stories broke my wife. She went the next day and said, I wasn't recruited to do this sort of work and walked out. Now that's just a tiny episode, there are lots more. It's the surveillance of our personal lives, our private lives that was even in some ways worse than what they were doing politically because they couldn't do too much politically. Some of them tried. They made up stories which, as Justice Mitting now reveals, uh, were false and were disregarded. They exaggerated the threat of violence when we had already decided in July that the next demonstration would be a peaceful, disciplined march, a I mean, show of strength, not a test of strength. It's interesting. The police said today that the SDS was set up, as you, as, you, as you acknowledge, at a time of significant sort of political and social change, you know, the argument to try and head off potential violence. Did you accept that as a premise then at all? Well, look, no, because we knew the special branch existed. We knew MI5 existed. We weren't so naive as to imagine that they were just there for show. They did their work. Uh, they sent in reports, some of which we've seen, some of which still haven't been revealed. And so, you know, that's part of the activities of the British state, or any state for that matter. That didn't surprise us. But setting up a special group without recourse to Parliament was illegal, in my opinion, and I would have been happier had the report actually said that. Whether it was justified or not is a question, intra-police question. Why was it justified? Were the special branch not doing their job? And some of these jokers who came in as SDS people, uh, were, were, there were tense relations between them and the special branch. I mean, just briefly, if you would, I mean, you said at the time, you know, the Home Office and, and, and governments of, of both colours didn't really ask any questions about this group. This inquiry is ongoing now. What do you hope to get out of the inquiry? I think the inquiry, uh, to be fair, the first report is pretty reasonable. Uh, in my opinion, it uh, says uh, what many of us have been saying for years, that there is absolutely no justification, was no justification uh, for spying on far left groups, peace movements, uh, women's groups, etc. And I think the inquiry has more or less said that. The r sad reality is that what these people did at that time, 50 years ago, I mean, I was quite shocked when I found out I'd been surveillanced or spied on for almost 60 years. I mean, what a waste of public money, when virtually everything I said was written in public, not Mr. just Raleigh, said in uh, private. Going to have to leave it there, but thank you very much for talking to us. Thank you.